wonderful Wednesday evening. Wet Wednesday, we call it. <laughs> Wet Wednesday. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's a beautiful rain. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, our weather knows better than to cause destruction. Amen. Amen. No, we, we, uh, we know, we, we tell it, you behave, clouds, you behave. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, God is good. Amen. He is a good, 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 good. God. He is good. People need to get revelation of that, 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 that he's a good God. You know, he wants everything good for us. Amen. And um, his word is all good for us. It's, um, it's full of promises, full of love. And um, like this day and age, you're thinking, why did this happen? Why did that happen? You know, they don't see... They say, why did God allow this to happen? But he's a good God. There's principles. God is merciful and he is just. Amen? Amen. He's a just God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, uh, we're going to go in part two of a disciple knows God's will. Amen. Part two. Hallelujah. As a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we must be consistent in and are seeking the word and studying it. Yes. This takes discipline. Discipline, discipline. I know that when um, students of colleges or students of real estate or students of brokerage, um, brokerage firms and um, people studying fields like insurance or, or whatever, uh, they have books, thick books and books and books to read and to study. The paramedic books, boy, when Jason was doing that study, his, he had big, thick books, and he had to study and study and study. And even the furtherances of his firefighter uh, uh, studies for more advances, advancement requires discipline because that's a lot of information. You know, we have a lot of information, but our spirit helps us with this information. We're not out there on a limb because the Holy Spirit teaches us. Amen? Amen? But we have to take the time and be disciplined for the word. The outcome of our study of his word is shown by our faith and victorious miracles. If you want a victorious miracle, you have to have faith for it. And the more that you study, the more you have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. The word of God, but you got to do something to you. Got to make some movement in that faith of what you studied in the word, so that you can have victorious miracles. God's will is for us to always have victorious outcome. He doesn't want us to have a bad outcome. He wants it always to be victorious, and He's given us the handbook on how to do it, how to study, study page this, page this. I'll show you what to do. You know, do your homework and. And, uh, and, and he will make sure that he is working behind the scenes for us. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we want to, uh, go, you can go there if you want. Second Chronicles 16, 9, and I'm going to read it, uh, read it here. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. It says, and I'll start reading it by the time your fingers do the walking. Okay. <laughs> For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. So he's looking. He's looking. Who can I show myself strong to? Who can I show? Let me see their heart. Let me see their heart. Whose heart is perfect towards him. So God's eyes are watching out for our faith words that come out of our heart. There's a lot of words that we can speak that uh, come out of our our head, our head knowledge, but the words that we speak that comes out from our heart, these are the words that that 2 Chronicles 69 is talking about. He's showing himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. Good to see you. Hallelujah. So the heart is what he is after. Because when you have a heart full of the word of God, it's going to come out. When you have a heart full of faith, it's going to come out by your works. You're going to do something. When your heart is full of other stuff, that comes out. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. And so uh, he's watching. He's going throughout all the world looking and watching and looking to see how can I show myself strong. And so we know that with the heart man believes. Amen. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. He's searching for us to declare that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's what Ephesians 6.10 says. So he is uh, wanting us to be strong in him and in his power. Strong in the word. You know, even the most simplest verses. If you haven't used them in a long time, you have to say, oh, how does that, I know that. How does, how does that go? For God so loved the world, he gave his only uh, what, what, what? Begotten son, that, uh, and what else? You become so used to, like, oh, I know John 3, 16, or I know Ephesians uh, 6, 10, no, you know, but saying it is that extra step. Saying it is that extra step. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. I love that. We're going to put our eyes on that. 2 Corinthians, hallelujah, chapter 4, verse 13. And I'm reading the modern uh, English version. It says here, We have the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. So we also believe, therefore we speak. So God is working behind the scenes, but he's waiting to hear, to watch us, watch our heart, hear our words. So we believe what we speak. You know, we, that's why it's so important not to speak idle words because do you believe that? Do you believe that? You believe, therefore you speak. So you believe what he tells you, what he says in the word, therefore you're going to speak that word. The Lord has given us a word many years ago that Oasis Center Church is a successful church with successful people. Now that word success can go a long way. Successful could be in everything, spiritual, uh, financial, physical. I mean, and just so many uh, great breakthroughs for the church and for the people. It's a, uh, a beautiful place, we always say. It's a beautiful place. But the, uh, we are to be made successful because when the prophet speaks, we believe, we believe the word of the prophet. And it, we have seen that happen over and over. When we first started our church, even in a, as a Bible study, people just started getting blessed immediately. Jobs, houses, cars. We're like, wow, you know, that word is right. And we, we're still, we, you know, we're still believing that even though we got jobs and houses and cars and the word just working in us and witness left and right and friends and, and, and bonuses and <coughs> rebates and refunds, there's more. More, more word to know, more friends to be made. Uh, you, you got the house you've been believing, believing God for, now stretch your faith and get a bigger one or another one or something fits your need. Have you already got that car? Stretch your faith and get another car so you can fill that up with people and bring them to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we always having to uh, speak words of faith. I believe, therefore I speak. When you get in some emergency situations like I did, was it Sunday night? I can't remember when it was. That, um, when was that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to speak what you believe. I was talking about I had food poisoning the day before yesterday. And uh, yeah, that dirty devil is a liar. And so we're, I believe before I speak, and I says, no, I take my healing now. I take my healing. I'm go, blah, blah, and I take my healing. I take my healing to where I was like, uh, I couldn't breathe. Uh, and he says, what's the matter? I can't breathe. And then immediately, see how the devil comes to try to steal, steal from you? I'm speaking the word. I'm declaring it. And uh, my body's shaking all over. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is not happening in the name of Jesus. And immediately the enemy was telling me that uh, I had many, many, many years ago, I had to be you know, maybe 10 or 11, uh, I had a, a Down syndrome cousin that uh, uh, was throwing up in bed and, and she suffocated and she went to be with the Lord. She suffocated because she, she couldn't uh, uh, know how to get everything out and the devil was reminding me, well, she died from that and I was like, <laughs> the breath, the breath. And I was, see, I was 
speaking the words, uh, there's a song uh, that his breath in my lungs. It's your breath in my lungs, and I call out your praises. It's your breath in my lungs. I call out your praises. And I was just breathing and breathing. But see, you have to be sharp in the word. I had all these scriptures coming in as a warfare and everything. And, and, and that can happen to you in, in a moment's notice. You know, the, where you're needing to hear the word in your heart. Amen. Because you have the heart as that reservoir of the word of God in, in there. And you pull out of it. Not fear, not anxiety. The word of God. So God, remember, last week, uh, Sunday, we said God is always working behind the scenes. He is working behind the scenes for you, always. But he's waiting on us to speak. And one more step, act. We believe, therefore we speak. Now we have to be a doer of the word. You know how many times it says, I'm going to, I've always said, I'm going to have my grandma house. The house is just perfect, big enough for all of us. We have a grandma house. And, you know, I believe, therefore I speak, and I never stop looking. I give it up sometimes, but I never stop looking because I know, I know that, uh, that what I speak in the word of God will happen. It will come true. I know that. And you watch, you'll, you'll be, uh, we'll have a testimony on that. So he is waiting on us to speak and to act. Amen. Keep on reading those scriptures that build you up. To build you up. Don't read the scriptures to where, and God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and he burned it on fire. <laughs> or God opened the, opened the land and it killed all those that were so com- repeatedly disobedient. Read some good scriptures that will build you up. Amen. Hallelujah. I know people, when they first get saved, I want to read all about Revelation. It's like, you know, read about Jesus first. Read about Jesus, get some wisdom, get some Proverbs, and then eventually gravitate to the book of Revelation. But people that are, are so in, on zeal for God, they want to go straight to Revelation. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, I don't understand that. And they, some people just get scared and just don't read the Bible anymore after that. Because they don't understand our future. And so we um, read those scriptures that build us up. You know, you run into some scriptures about healing. Jesus is all about healing. So if you need healing, you get the healing scriptures going. Start speaking those healing scriptures every day. Even if you are not sick, just by reading the word, he says that he builds you up. Remember Proverbs 3? He's, he he's, gives you healing. Uh, you're, you're built up and, and he comes with healing in his wings. You know, he heals you. Even if you don't know there's something wrong with you, he's healing you. That means wholeness. He keeps you whole. Every day when you get up and look yourself in the mirror and brush your teeth, you say, I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. All my organs are working for me. All my bones are strong. All of my muscles are are, are not weak, but they're strong. All my organs are good. My heart is good. My brain is sharp. I have the mind of Christ. You know, just, just go over, do a confession all over your body every day. Amen. And when you're 120 years old, you'll be able to have the strength like Abraham did. He was not feeble. He was not weak. And there's those testimonies. You've seen these old people. So I was like, wow, I can't believe they're over 100 years old. And they're like lifting weights and stuff. Hallelujah. So God is working behind the scenes for you and waiting for you and watching you and waiting for you to speak the word. If you don't know what kind of word to speak, look and dig and find those beautiful words of life. Like remember Peter said, where can I go for you have the words of life? That is so beautiful. Don't let anyone, anything, or any situation discourage you. I'll say that again. Don't let anyone, anything, or any situation discourage you. Not the news, not the media, not the doctors, not um, your fears, not the devil speaking to you. The enemy wants to take your faith away. And so the more that you're in the word, the devil's like, I got to get that word away from them. Because they're going to know who they are in Christ. They're going to have victory. I got to distract them. 
right? When they're in the middle of studying, somebody comes over, their phone rings or something, you know, he'll do anything to keep you away from the word. And I know it sounds like a simple thing, but he's a sneaky, deceitful enemy. And he'll try the, the smallest things. So faith comes, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But it's not enough just to hear and hear the word of God. Yes, that motivates your faith. You go to a seminar and you're hearing and you're sitting in a conference and you're like, Woo, yes, I'm pumped up. Yes, I'm ready to, to take mountains and get cities saved for Jesus and all that. But after you leave the conference, real life happens. You go home and you're like, phew, deflated because you didn't have the, the word being preached to you to build you up because then you have to do it yourself. You have to build yourself up. So faith comes by hearing the word however you need to, need to do something with your faith. Keith Moore said this quite a long time ago. He said, faith is not frustrating. He says, if you are frustrated, then you are not 100% in faith because there is fear involved. So if you feel frustrated, I've been waiting, I've been hanging on to this, I've been believing, and right when I get a green light, the door closes on me, and there's an open door, and that closes on me, and, and, and you know, I, I have favor for this, and then, you know, this happens, then you start getting in fear, like, oh, you know, what is going on? You have to be 100% in faith, 100%. You got to speak positive in faith. Like, don't say, but, well, I'm trying. I hope so. How many times have we prayed for people and, like, you know, by just stripe, you're healed and okay, go home and just keep speaking that word of God? Well, I hope so. Sure, and they're with the faith out the window. Our words are very important. That's why God is watching. He's watching. Even Jesus watched. The little widow with the might, he watched her put it in the offering plate. God is a watcher. He's watching us. He's watching us. Hallelujah. So we got to lay hold of faith. Lay hold of faith. We got to do everything in our power to keep ourselves built up in faith. Because the world will get darker and darker, but God's word will get brighter and brighter if you keep laying hold of the word of God. Read, 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 read. Read those footnotes. Read those references. Read if your Bible has studies on it. Read those Bible studies. Get yourself full and filled. Ephesians 3.12. Uh, let's go there to Ephesians 3.12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Make yourself an own campaign, your own campaign. I know it's past the beginning of New Year's, but start anytime. Start like this year, I'm going to read through the Bible. Challenge yourself. Ephesians 3.12, is it? Let's see. It says, hallelujah. It says, in whom we have boldness and confident access. Ooh, that's good. Through faith in him. We have boldness. When you're filled with the word of God and you're speaking that word and you say, no devil, my God says this. He supplies all my needs. I am healed and I am whole. I believe, therefore I speak. He makes you bold. And whom, uh, it says, uh, I love the, the verse before it, according to the eternal purpose which he completed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Is completed on the cross, in whom we have boldness and confident access. I don't know if your Bible says this because I'm reading the modern English version. Confident access. Remember, I go into the Holy of Holies. You can go into the Holy of Holies beyond the veil that was ripped when Jesus went on the cross and went up to be with his Father. He says, now we can go to the Holy of Holies. Now we have confident access. How? Through faith in him. You can't have access, you know, uh, with fear like, oh yeah, I can do that. How many, you'll be surprised how many fearful prayers we have heard. 
like, oh God, please, please, please. And we have people say, could you pray for my son? Oh, please, say please, please. And they're begging and crying and begging. That's not confident access through faith in him. That prayer had no faith whatsoever. It was a fearful prayer. Fearful prayer. You had to be careful if we pray in fear, like, oh my God, oh my God, please. Oh my God, oh my God, please. No, that, that's a wrong direction. You can say, oh my God, I thank you, Lord, because your word is true. Oh my God, it might sound like such an emergency, but I will not fear. I will not fear. Amen? Amen. I have faith. Hallelujah. You boldly proclaim the word of God. You know, I've told you this many, many times when my son had the motorcycle accident. We said, you know, we'll not fear. We're trusting in him. We'll not fear. And we made up our mind in the millisecond that we heard that. Well, we heard it in our spirit before it manifested in, in real life that our son was in an accident. And immediately, we'll not fear. We'll not fear. You know, we, we, um, we know we trust in him. We tr we're trusting in God. We trust in him. We put our trust in God, and God turned that around. It was a miracle. And that's the video you see if you go on our website of that miracle. Hallelujah. It's touched many, many, many people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we, faith gives you boldness. And you can be confident in knowing that what God has blessed us, that God has blessed us is with spiritual blessings. Be confident knowing that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. That's your confidence. I am blessed. I'm supposed to be blessed. I walk in the blessings of God. And blessings is everything. Mind, no mental torment, no fear. Your will, I'm blessed with the will. I will to serve God. Your emotions, I'll not be emotional. I'll not, you know, I had this real bad habit, you know. I would always go, you know, when I see Pastor Robert getting too close to a car. <laughs> you know, I had to break that habit because... The is a fear sigh, <laughs> you know, but God has blessed us all spiritual blessings, so there should be no more <sighs> in exclamations, hallelujah. Let's go to number 13. I, 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 I like this story because I like Joshua and Caleb. Um, this is, um, here we're going to see um, the, 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 uh, the direction, um, the directions that God gave Moses on what to do. This numbers and double light. Okay, numbers. Numbers 13. And um, here we know that they're about to get this land given to them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're fixing to spy the Canaan land. So in uh, Numbers 13, 1, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men that they may explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, you will send a man, each one a chief among them. And so all, we know all the 12 tribes of Israel. It's, uh, we just studied this in Sunday school. It's a lot of them. Uh, Sophia has most of them memorized. But, you know, Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Ishakar, Ephraim, Benjamin, Zebulun, Joseph, Dan, Asher, Nephtali, and Gad. Of all those of the 12 tribes of Israel, there was, of the tribe of Judah, there was Caleb. He came from the tribe of Judah. Of the tribe of Ephraim was Hoshea, which is Joshua. Joshua and Caleb were among all these um, 12 tribes, so they sent men there. So there was 12 of them, maybe a little more. 12 of them that, that God said to go and spy this land of Canaan. He said, they, so there's 12 of them. And so um, verse, let's look at verse 17. And Moses sent them to explore or spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up to this south land and go up into the mountain and see what the land is and the people that dwell in it, whether... They're strong or weak, few or many, and I'm just going to say this, uh, 
not word for word. See if it's good or bad, whether they live in tents or fortifications, whether it's a fat land or lean land, whether there's wood in it or not. And you, and you be courageous and bring some of the fruit of the land there. And so that fruit we know was grapes that were the hugest grapes that took uh, two men to carry them on a log. They were so heavy, they were so big. And then they brought some pomegranates and figs. And so they, they took 40 days of exploring that. But let's go down to verse 27. So we're, they're knowing that it's a good land that God has given them. Verse 27, they reported to him and said, See, they returned back to Moses and Aaron, and they uh, gave this report. We came to the land where you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is a fruit of it. So I circle surely, and verse, uh, the next verse says, However, I think some Bible says, Nevertheless, however, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are fortified and very great. And we saw the children of Anak there. And so they were saying, oh, of all these uh, tribes, enemy tribes that are there. So the howevers and the neverthelesses brought fear and doubt to the rest of the people. But Caleb, verse uh, 30, Caleb silenced the people before Moses said, let us go up at once and possess it, for ye, we are able to overcome it. So he immediately spoke faith words. You remember Jesus when uh, uh, he was uh, raising a little girl uh, from the deathbed? <coughs> he didn't give him, excuse me. No. And uh, they said, don't bother the master, your child is dead. And he silenced them immediately. He says, don't fear. She's simply sleeping. So immediately, you have to address something. <coughs> Excuse me. So he silenced them, and he said, let us go up. Immediately, he spoke faith words, action words, doer of the words. He said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are able to overcome it. So immediately, when you run into a roadblock or an accident or a no on a credit report, you know, or a loan or whatever it is you want to do, or immediately answer it and tell yourself, I am well able because God, if God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. Immediately answer that. That's why he had to silence the people. Let's go verse 31. But the men that went with him, remember all those, the 12 tribes. So we have Joshua and Caleb, the exception. The rest are naysayers. The rest of the 10 men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people because they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land. And so this land was a good land. But they couldn't see it as a good land. Let's look at uh, the first part of um, verse, chapter 14, excuse me, verse 1. And because of that, they saw the children of Anak are there. These great and mighty warriors are there. It didn't matter how good the land was. But what did they do? It says, and the whole assembly lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And then they grumbled against Moses and against Aaron. They grumbled and grumbled and grumbled again. This is the tenth time that God had to put up with their rebellion. And so he said, you know what? You're not going into this land. Everybody else is. And so they had to wait for them to die off so that the next generation could go up and take this land. The Joshua and Caleb generation. Amen? Amen. Because they wouldn't take no for an answer. Because it's so, it was so clear. He said, we are well able to overcome it. Let's possess it. We're well able. It belongs to us. What word 
What better word can you count on than the word of God says, this is the land that I'm giving you. This is the land. So God spoke to, to Moses. He said in, in 13 uh, verse 2, he says, I am giving this land to every tribe of Israel. I'm giving it to them. But they couldn't remember God saying, I'm giving it to them. They're saying, oh, no, we can't. And they cried all night like a baby. No, oh, we can't have this land. Oh, these giants will kill us. They didn't take, they didn't put their eyes on the beautiful, huge grapes and the pomegranates and the figs that freely grow in that land. And how many people are like that today? They can't put their eyes on the blessing, but they put their eyes on the negative reports. But, but this, but, but that. We have to be aware of the howevers and the bad reports. Ten bad reports versus two good reports. Whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. My next point. When you don't feel like researching and speaking the word, that is when you need it the most. When you don't feel like it, it's when you need it the most. Let's look at John 8. Let's go to St. John 8, 31 and 32. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's read, let's read backwards. Let's read uh, verse 32 first. And you've heard it. Even un 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 um, non-Christians speak this. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth, the truth will set you free. Free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. They just say it all the time. But look at what the verse before it says. You want to be set free? Look at what verse 31 says. And Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, believed him, if you remain or continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. We're talking about uh, tonight that a disciple knows God's will. So he's saying in, in the Jewish the contemporary um, Messianic Jewish version says, uh, you shall know the truth, right? He says, if you, um, no, going back to 31, if you continue, remain, and obey what he says, then you are truly a disciple indeed. So there's, remember I said there's, benefits to continue in the word it's like an exam that you're doing extra credit with you continue in it but remain don't continue and be on fire for one week because you heard a good sermon and then next week it just wanes and you need encouragement that's when you need it the most but you continue remain stay in it and like the jewish people say Obey what he says. Obey what he says. Then you're truly my disciples. Be a doer of the word. And you shall know the truth. When you do all of that, when you're disciplined to be a disciple, and you continue studying, you continue fellowshipping with him, you continue having coffee with Jesus, and just be silent and hear what he says to you, then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It'll set you free. Knowing who you are in Christ and everything belongs to you will set you free. Too many people want to do things on their own. They want to do things on their own. You know, that, that, that is, uh, it, it is completely opposite of submitting unto God's word. Because you want to do it your way, but you have to submit God's way. And so, just because you know the truth, it will make you free until you are a doer of the word. Doing is different than learning. So, okay, we're learning, we're in it, we're reading, 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 studying. And so, you still have to do it. Doing is different than learning. Apply what you learn and you will experience the truth that sets you free. You'll experience that, the truth. And I really buckled up with the word of God when I found out I had cancer. And the truth made me free. 
but that, I, that means I still have to keep up just because I don't have cancer. I still have to keep up with the words of healing and just, you know, just keep quoting all the scriptures. And so you don't stop, just stop by taking notes. Like, okay, I'm taking notes in the church service. You don't stop there. You know, go to the next step and make movement. Go over your notes. We still have our notes from in the 1980s with the John Osteen. 79 to be exact, 1979, 78, 79. We still have our notes, believe it or not. And it's the same word today, just like yesterday. It's his, his, uh, the word of God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's as we look at our notes, it's as if we're reading it right now. Because his word is forever. So go to the next step and make movement. Be a doer of the word. Do what you're learning. Do what he says. You'll know in your spirit because the Holy Spirit is shed abroad in your heart. Hallelujah. Have you ever noticed someone saying, Hallelujah, oh yeah, I believe, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And, and they're talking the Christian talk, you know. And they're quoting scriptures. But when pressure comes, remember Pastor talked about the man that hit his the thumb with the sledgehammer in Mexico City on the, on the field. And we were building a Bible college up there. When pressure comes on, they will cuss. Why? Because they had head knowledge, not heart knowledge. When someone, have you ever been with someone uh, in a car and, and uh, you thought they were a pretty good Christian and all of a sudden someone cuts in front of them and the, they have a little road ra rage, and then they cuss. Cuss word comes out. And you're like, oh, brother's a deacon in the dirt. Oh, my word. We heard a stranger we don't know. He calls himself a minister pastor. Maybe he was once before. And his word was like, let, let, let a stupid blank blank this, a stupid blank blank. We're like, that ain't no pastor. That ain't no minister. <laughs> I don't know where, what he's thinking, but that, that's... That's how you, how you know who's been in the word, who's taking the word in their heart, because it comes out. It comes out. When you stub your toe or something, what's going to come out? Thank you, Jesus, I'm healed, or bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> That's why he is looking throughout the whole world, searching for someone whose heart, but what is this scripture here? whose heart is perfect towards him. David had a perfect heart towards him, but he sinned with Bathsheba. But he got over it and got back on the right path, and he was known as the, the psalmist that worshiped God always with his whole heart. He loved the Lord. He had such a love for the Lord, and nothing could take that love away from him. Amen? Amen. So a true disciple knows God's will. Continue and remain in his love, in his word, and see the beauty of Jesus Christ. The words in red are so beautiful. He loves you no matter what. No matter what. You know, here and there, we make mistakes in life sometimes. And we, we say, God, I should have known better, Lord. But the worst thing that you can do is to know that you hurt his heart. When you have that conviction that you hurt the Lord's heart, that means you have a tender heart towards God. And be quick to repent and go on. Go on with God once again. Too many people are doing their own thing. They're doing their own thing, and they're not searching the scriptures for themselves. Spouses need to constantly pr be praying the scriptures and maybe reading the scriptures together and praying the word of God. Iron sharpens iron. If you don't have a spouse, get a prayer partner that can sharpen that iron of the word of God with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah.
I believe that God is wanting us to buckle up because the days are getting darker, but in the land of Goshen, we have light. And we will always have light. Amen? Amen. God is for us. Who can be against us? Who can be against us? I love, I know that, that song, uh, it's from the, the Pentecostal singing it. it uh, we don't sing it here because they sing it too much. But I know uh, one of the verses, uh, I know he's working. I know uh, that God is working. Behind the scenes, he's working. I know he's working. I don't know the name of the song, but I can't think of it right now. But he's working. He is working on your behalf. He's the same Jesus that worked on behalf of all these beautiful people in the Bible, all the patriarchs of faith. He's never changed. We've changed, but he never changes. So we have to change to conform to his will, to his ways, that the glory of God would come upon us, and that we're changed every day from glory to glory to glory. Amen? And, you know, I got revelation. I, I was reading something with, um, well, I was reading a devotion. I was telling the, gir the girls, my grandchildren, it's like, wow, you know, they told the disciples, these men have been with Jesus. Look at the radiance on their faces. They have been with Jesus. When you're with Jesus, you start glowing, and the glory of God is on you. And the more that you're in the Word, the more He is on you and in you and in your heart. And, and every word is about Jesus, is based on the Word and His principles and His morals. Everything about, about Him, it just exudes you. Because when we get raptured up, we take us His complete glory. He's preparing us here on earth. Because when we go up, we'll have 100% of his glory, amen? amen? Which is soon. Jesus is coming so soon. And he is wanting us to just get that word in us more and more and more and more. You know, I don't want to confess this, but one of these days our electronics are not going to work, work on it. You know, I hate it when they do up, updates because it's like, this is all messed up. But you know what? We'll have the paper book. We have the paper book. Amen? Let's keep these Bible pages. You know, we should have one. We have about 15 Bibles at home, right? Have you ever count? count? I know you, I have a lot in my office. He has a lot in his office, and we have a lot in, all around the house in the bedrooms. And so we just have to look for a translation. But now you have it uh, online. But, you know, we used to look at the Strong's Concordance, looked it up. Remember, we used to have to do that. Now you, you do it on, on the phone. But let's love the word. Fall in love the word. Like the last song says, Jesus, I'm hungry for you. I am hungry for you. Let's stand up and put your hand over your heart. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Keep us hungry for you. Let us constantly press in, no matter how tired we are, no matter how distracted we get, let us press in to read your word. Read through the whole Bible. Read the words of bread of Jesus. Read all about the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then the apostles, the acts of the apostles. And then go back and read. In the beginning was God. In the beginning, where you started it all, Lord. And how you teach us by all of the historical accounts of men's failures and men's victories. So that we could learn not to fail like others have. So we can learn not to grumble like the Israelites did. So we can learn to be bold like Caleb says. We are able to overtake the enemy. And we still overtake the enemy. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. And Father, I pledge my heart to you, God. I pray that our hearts are so filled 
with the word of God on everyone here, we pray, and everyone listening. May they press in now more than ever because life, their life depends on it. Our lives depend on the word of God. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit help us we pray that the Holy Spirit gives us blocks of time, quiet time, even if you have to wake us up in the middle of the night like you have done so many times for us all. And Father God, I pray that, that our, the eyes of our understanding is enlightened, that we're working, we are striving to know more of each scripture and study it and see it in the light how you see it Lord and we bind up the works of the enemy that wants to steal the word by cares of this world by thorns and wheat the tares the distractions and trials and tribulations we bind up your work Satan you take your hands off of God's people you will not steal the word from them in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Oh, let's just give him a praise. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, because we have the victory. And this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.